In December of last year, Derek J. Wyatt, the art director and character designer for Transformers Animated, passed away unexpectedly. When his family was cleaning out his home, his collection of toys was sold to a local store in Burbank called Blast from the Past. The other day, I flew down to Burbank to check out the store and see what remaining Transformers Animated merchandise was still there. Some people on Twitter had seen prototypes in the store. Specifically, the red bulkhead figure. It makes sense that Derek would have owned that because he apparently liked the look of it so much that he colored a bulkhead animation model in Photoshop to look like the red bulkhead. On company time, according to the TF Wiki. I wasn't expecting any like rare prototype figures to still be there. I figured by now, probably some of the more valuable stuff would have been gone. Although to my surprise, there was a lot of really rare stuff there. I walked from the airport to the store. It was about an hour walk. Couldn't check into the hotel until like four hours later, so I just had my stuff in a backpack. And they also let me look at bins in the back of the store, which they hadn't sorted onto the shelves yet. And these were huge bins, just full of figures. The store owners were actually so incredibly kind and generous because they actually gave me a ride back to the Marriott after I bought two full duffel bags worth of figures. I went to the Goodwill across the street and just got two suitcases to put everything in. And yeah, I was asking them about it on the ride back and they said it took seven fully loaded van trips just to get all of his bins of toys out of that house. And it was like, it was a big van. It was a, like, lime, it was a bright lime green Toyota Sienna. And they said, like, half of his stuff is still in their home garage that they haven't even brought to the store yet, yet alone sorted through. So they said maybe in a month or so, there will be a lot more of his stuff on the shelves than there is currently. I don't know if I'll be back then. This is a collection of everything that I gathered from Blast from the Past all of which came from the collection of Derek J. Wyatt. And I just figured I would quickly showcase a lot of what I got, because there is some cool stuff here. I'll start with something incredible that I did not even know existed. Bumblebee and Optimus Prime trick-or-treat Halloween baskets. Optimus still has the tags on it. I love weird Transformers animated merchandise more than anything in the world. I'm more excited about these than any of the rare figures I got. I made a whole video showcasing a lot of it a while back. There's even more that I've never shown on video before that I have. I've had these for a while. I don't even know what they are, but I am way, way too scared to open them. Look how ugly these figures are. He's like cross-eyed. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I found an Optimus Prime mask, which is great because Alex has the other one. He has the Bumblebee one. He's my internet pal who's helped me animate things. So now we can match. I plan to wear this every day for the rest of my life. These, right here. In the store, I wasn't even sure what they were. This one was already opened. It's a Transformers animated cup, licensed by Takara. And there's like a silver statue of TFA Optimus. I'm gonna see what this, I'm gonna see what the other ones are. Tentatively. I really like the fact that Derek opened them from the bottom so that the top would still look nice for display. Uh, and yeah, okay. And this one is a Megatron. And I'm not seeing the plate for it to stand on. And then these last two actually aren't opened at all. They're still sealed, so I'll, I'll just leave them sealed. According to the text on the bottom here, there are four kinds, and I'm gonna assume that all four of these boxes are the four kinds, and Derek got them all. There's a treasure chest from that golden era of the show where they just slapped the five, like, promotional images onto a random product and called it a day. I found a ton of Transformers animated books. And also, still there was uh, Derek's entire IDW collection. I didn't wind up um, picking that up, but that's still at the store. I got two copies of The Return of Blur storybook, one for me, and then I'll give one to Alex. I think this is the exact same Autobot drawing that they used for the Transformers Collectors Club issue about the cancelled season four episodes. Transformers, robots in disguise. 
It's just the character models, one action shot, and then the briefest text about them. Here are storybooks kind of retelling the events of episodes. Bumblebee vs. Meltdown, Attack of the Dinobots, Starscream flies again, Clash of the Constructicons, based on the television show. If you look inside of these, actually haven't yet, uh, it's just basically some events from the show. It looks like this one is Festival of Energon. It's just retelling the script in storybook form. Oh, that's fascinating. There is a deleted scene from this episode where Starscream used his sonic weapons. It was shown in the Allspark Almanac, but it was cut. But then here, that line's still in the book. Sonic weapons are useless here. Pearl says that. That's interesting. I That's cool. I got the whole series where it's just retelling the events of the show um, with screenshots and text bubbles. So essentially the graphic novel rendition of Transformers Animated. Uh, they did this, I think, through the end of season two. Where's the end? These were in order. Okay, here. 13. Yeah, volume 13. This is bridge too close. So I got the whole thing. If I ever learn how to read, these are going to be incredible. And then I got the Pick Your Path books. Be the Hero, Web of Deception, Time Quake, Quest for the Allspark, Prime Suspect. To die for cover, turn to 6. To trust Prime to counter Blitzwing's attack, turn to 56. Well, I trust Prime. Let's go to 56. Up above. Wait, just up above? What? This is 57. There's no label. And then this is 56. Whatever. As Blitzwing's fiery roars. Anyway, etc. These are the books... My favorite thing I've ever owned is the Bumblebee Bye Bye Boo Boo Ice Pack. Officially licensed. I don't think I'm ever going to leave my house without this. Apparently there's an Optimus version too. These are a super cool holy grail. It's the Mega Bloks Transformers animated Bumblebee and Optimus that were Japanese exclusive. As a kid I thought these were awesome and I always wanted them. I'm actually going to be shipping these to Alex. Because I think as a kid he wanted these probably more than I wanted them. $50. Q, Optimus, and Lockdown. I honestly have no clue what these are, because they're not TFA things, but Alex said they're cool, so I'll give these to him. There was one more Lockdown left in the store, still in box. Didn't have the plastic around it, though. $25. Three wallets. I'm considering making these my permanent wallets for the rest of my life. Also, I swear, there were four wallets in the store. I thought I grabbed four. I think I might have, like, left one there by accident or dropped it or something. I know there were four. Somehow I only wound up with three. Gears and Games book. It's kind of just copy and pasting some of the art from some of the other, like, Transformers animated activity books I've already showcased. It comes with markers. This is cool. Stickers. Uh, I got... A sorry and a fan zone. I already have one fan zone. I got Jeff Bennett to sign it. So Alex will get these and then I'll get a sorry. I didn't see a sumdack. The guy at the checkout counter was like, just so you know, this is a knockoff. And I was like, oh, there were no non-knockoffs of this. Japanese Transformers animated book. It just shows like baseline information about the characters and their personalities again. That's all it really is. The coolest thing I found was this DVD. Music by Christopher Carter, Lolita Ramirez, and Michael McCouston. Forgive me if I pronounce those wrong. These are three legendary composers from animation history, but what's fascinating is that they did not do any work on Transformers Animated. So what this disc actually turned out to be was the Transformers Animated test footage with three different scores, as if these guys were maybe auditioning to do the music for the show at one point. I don't know if audition is the right word, but in consideration before Sebastian Evans was ultimately chosen. I made like a whole separate video to showcase this, because this is one of the coolest things I've ever had the pleasure of finding completely by accident. Lastly, I think this is like a, a mighty mug of TFA Optimus. I know that they made a Derek Wyatt Mighty Mug at one point. I was actually kind of hoping I'd find that. Either someone already has it, or it hasn't been put on the shelves yet. Now to showcase some of the figures I got. When it comes to like the Transformers animated toys, like the action figures, 
I don't care at all. When it comes to just Transformers toys in general, I have a complete goldfish memory. I'll like see new toys exist and then the information will just leave my brain and never come back almost immediately. Garbage in, garbage out, you could say. So I don't have a good gauge of what Transformers toys exist, even in Transformers Animated. I'm also just a terrible collector. I got electrostatic sound wave for Alex. And he was like, oh, did he get Rat Bat? I was like, shoot, forgot. I got this hyper rare Nemesis Prime to give Alex. And he was like, did you get the weapons? And I was like, shoot, I forgot. I think my dumbest moment was I found this wasp and I was like, oh my gosh, the fugitive waspinator repaint. Derek had it. I can't believe that toy was produced. His arm keeps falling off. So I got it thinking it was literally the unreleased figure and then I showed it to Alex on a call and within seconds he was like, this is a custom, the head's different, and this is the cadet paint job, not the wasp knitter paint job that the toy would have had. So that was an L on my part. It is a cool custom though. I was looking up like wasp customs to see if I could maybe figure out who made this and return it to them. I cannot find any wasp custom that had this cadet paint job. So I'll ship it to Alex for now. On a similar note, there was this Optimus Prime axe, which is just like some regular toy axe painted to look like Optimus's that Derek had. I'm not sure what this is. We got the goofy eye. Uh... It's not what I thought. Oh, wrong button. Yeah, bumble bumper battler. Elite Guard Prowl. By sheer luck, this one did have the shurikens attached. Yeah, here and here. Haven't transformed it yet. And on a similar note, I got Derek's final auto trooper. There was only one left on the shelf. I don't know if there are more yet to be sorted, and there easily could be. If this is the last one, I just feel incredibly lucky to even have it. Uh, we got Jackpot. Um... By sure luck, he has his weapons, too. This goes to Alex. Derek's Bumblebee for $4.99. Oh, I'm just noticing now. Didn't get boosters. I'm sure they were in the bucket somewhere, but I forgot. Activator Electrostatic for Alex. I got um, the Voyager Cybertron and Megatron because I forgot this even existed. I didn't remember this being a thing. And finally... Derek's favorite character, Swindle. Just holding this in my hands gave me this sense of imposter syndrome. I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I feel incredibly happy to have this, but it's such a bittersweet happiness because I only have these things because my childhood hero is no longer here. I don't think I've ever said this in a video before, but Derek is actually who connected me with Marty Eisenberg to interview him last year. I asked Derek at the time if he would want to do either an interview or a call where he kind of shows off his art style and I guess gives tutorials on how to draw like him. And he said he wasn't interested in either at the time. And later in the year, I had this idea to ask Derek if just on his own, he'd like to like take a video showcasing his collection and showing it off for part of my like trash formers show where I was going to do rare TFA merchandise, but I just got like shy and I was like, ah, I don't know. He'll probably say no again. And I didn't ask him and I regret it because I mean, he very well might've said no again. Now no one will really see his collection in full. Now it's all just scattered across a store in Burbank. A lot of it's been redistributed. It's sad. And I wish I had asked him. But Derek was incredible. He meant a lot to me. His work and his show meant a lot to me. And I'm gonna take care of this. Until the day I die and my collection goes to Blast from the Past. He also had a ton of Marvel and Star Wars toys beyond Transformers. I don't know much about the toys from that franchise, so I didn't really spend much time looking at it. Everyone there was incredibly nice. I was like the only customer in the store for two hours and there's just like, I don't know, six or seven employees. The owners were a couple, maybe in their 40s or so. I can see why Derek really liked the place. It was very relaxing.